Welcome, and thanks again for tuning in to In the Know with the Bullioness. I'm Dawn Marie, the Bullioness, a silver, silver Level Associate and Top Recruiter at 7K Metals. Please join me in welcoming special return guest A.G. Leverage to the show, who is an avid fan of history, economics, and politics. Today's conversation is about gold-backed currency. So, A.G., welcome to the show. Hi there, Don. How are you today? I'm doing awesome. Thank you so much for taking some time out this wonderful Wednesday, and we are excited to talk about this topic. So, in history, what has always happened to fiat money without the gold standard? It's it's the printing of fiat. So, once the gold standard is removed from Actually, Don, pardon me, before I go on into answering that question, I do want to reiterate that we are not financial planners. We are not licensed financial advisors. If someone is looking for professional opinions, please go to your financial planner. We are here merely stating our opinions regarding precious metals, the economy, and politics. So regarding the fiat paper, the moment that the, the gold is removed as backing the fiat, the, the the dollar. It is a dollar before before it's removed. When when that note is represented or backed by gold or silver, it is in fact a dollar because it's backed by a precious metal. It's backed by something real. The moment that it's removed from from the gold and the paper can just be printed without any end, that's when it becomes a fiat note. So. The reason that the gold is there is to be able to control the amount of printing that can take place. Only so much paper can be printed based on how much gold exists in that country or in that bank. Not any more than that. The moment that it's removed from the gold backing, that paper can just be printed like mad. And once that happens, we go through some pretty massive necessary inflation. Now, by definition, the economy must grow. Everything must grow because every single time that that paper is, is printed, it's a debt note, and it requires that same paper with interest to be paid back, and it doesn't have any backing whatsoever to begin with. So it is nothing more than paper at that point, from that point forward. So for that reason, if we look at history, that paper printing eventually just leads to even more paper printing, which eventually erodes the value of that paper to begin with, and, it, and the actual price of that paper reverts back to its intrinsic value, which is zero. Incredible. And why does asset price inflation eventually always occur? Asset price inflation occurs firstly because the paper is printed so much so that it takes more fiat to buy whatever good it is that a person is pursuing. If we look at recently Zimbabwe, or we look at uh, Venezuela, or we look at Argentina, uh, Argentina is probably the, it's occurring to them right now. They go through this every, every 10 to 12 years, it seems, where it takes more fiat dollars to buy that same good. So what we see out here in our every day is that the, the canned soup, the canned vegetables, or the burger, or the price of gasoline, or the gallon of milk, or, or whatever it is that's a daily consumable increases in price and or decreases in the amount that it's being sold. We'll see that a box of toothpaste is now smaller. We'll see that our, our, our uh, detergent is now the box is smaller for the same price. We start seeing the, the inflation in real terms. Now, so that happens because of the printing of currency. Now, how does a government react? How does a country react to that? Well, they, they do what they're doing now. If we look at history, they start increasing the tariffs of other countries. They start increasing the taxes for those other goods from other countries. And that's a way of – and they start sanctions as well. <clears throat> and what, what that is is what that means is that the government is saying – our government is saying, let's say, to another government. Right now it's happening to the European Union, let's say. Um, we're saying to them, you're printing too fast, and therefore we'll penalize you with increased tariffs as well as sanctions. Now, 
that tariff increase and those sanction increase means necessary layers of bureaucracy and additional attorneys to pay for. All of that money is also now printed to pay for that new layer of bureaucracy. Instead of that money going into production or manufacturing or industrialization of anything like that, it instead goes to this new layer of bureaucracy, which further erodes the purchasing power of the dollar and further shows as inflation to everyday goods and services that you and I consume. <laughs> wow, and that is happening. So what about a gold-backed economy? Is that coming back? Yes, if we look at history, and again, there are no original ideas here. For whatever reason, the powers that be, there's, they're extremely unoriginal. They do the same thing over and over and over again. I, I'm a fan of history, mostly because it, it just astounds me how they don't, they don't follow any new recipe. They just follow the same thing over and over again. What happens next is they'll start doing some, some mad printing. We've, all, we, we, we've spoken in previous videos. We've mentioned how right now the, re, the repo marketplace will now remain a, a stable idea where the, the central bank will make the other central banks liquid from here on forward with injections of billions of dollars on a daily basis. Beyond that, there's QE that's coming, and uh, many people believe that it starts as early as this month, where quantitative easing, which is the printing of dollar bills again towards the banks so that they can then in turn lend it out to the general economy that's coming, that will, will increase and continue to increase as it moves forward because those new dollar bills are going to try to buy up what the previous dollar bill couldn't buy because as it moves on and moves forward, that, that dollar will have less purchasing value. It'll, it'll, it'll be worth less with every new dollar printed. So eventually what happens is the governments will have zero choice but to back their currency with a precious metal, with gold. And that's why gold has always been here. It balances the equation. It gets governments... Uh, to create sound money again, because you can only print what you have gold enough to back it. You, you don't have a choice. So the the undeniable inevitability is that we will, in fact, return to a gold-backed currency once again. Does that mean that there's going to be turmoil out there? It does. It does, because inevitably, everything right now is priced in a dollar bill that no one really knows the value of because it's not backed by anything. So it's more than likely that things will return to their intrinsic value of what they're actually worth, everything that is dollar-denominated and the dollar itself. And that includes all of our investments. So for that reason, as you and I have said many times before, it is very important for all of us to buy precious metals and to consider saving in precious metals. And I like how you talk about it's really not buying it. It's all about converting it. If you do the research and review the history, these are telltale signs that something is occurring and just, you know, put a portion, convert it to gold and silver, and keep it in your possession, whatever that looks like. And really quickly, I think there is a big date coming up in two days. Uh, so they started those $75 billion cash injections a few weeks ago, and I believe it's good through or daily until October 10th. Was that correct? And is there significance to what will happen on October 11th? Uh, yes. So the $75 billion a day that the the Fed, the Federal Reserve has announced that they would they would go ahead and print money and inject it into the banks. Seventy five billion was the maximum. And they've done a little less than that on a daily basis. Sometimes they've done forty billion, sometimes they've done sixty billion. They said that they only needed to do it until October the tenth, and this was a few weeks ago. It is my opinion that it'll go way beyond October the tenth, that those cash injections will prove unresolving. And only because the the dollar again when it has no value, you just all you can do is continue printing more and more and more and more. There's, just, there's no end to that. Um, so, yes, after October the 10th, I believe we're going to see a rise in the precious metals. We already see that in countries around the world, uh, I believe it's up to 78 countries right now, where both gold and silver are, are at their all-time highs. It hasn't happened here in America yet. 
the all-time high of gold was 1,900 and something. Right now it's at about 1,500 more or less. And silver has been at uh, nearly $50 a couple of times in the, in the past. And right now it again is between 17 and $18. We will see an all-time high here again, but the bankers will do their very best to suppress that as long as possible so that this paper illusion and this money printing can continue as long as they can manage it. And right now their definition of managing it is printing, 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 printing. At some point that will simply not be enough. It won't matter how much they print. Um, if I may touch also, Don, on what you mentioned a moment ago, which is the reason why you and I do this on a daily basis, uh, the reason we talk about the importance of precious metals. We do that to, so that not just our loved ones and our friends and our neighbors and our clients know about the importance of precious metals, but we want to bring this to the general public so that they too become aware of what's occurring at their perimeter, even though their television doesn't tell them that, even though their daily news does not warn them of these things. We do this so that people rise and act and so that they are not caught off guard should something occur sooner than later. Again, you and I talk about this on a daily basis, and all we do is go back at history and see what's happened in the past. We look at our perimeter of what's occurring in other countries, and we can safely say, based on those things, here's where we're at, and here's what may occur next, so please act responsibly. Because looking back on history, those that put their head in the sand and said, oh, it's happening elsewhere, but will never happen here, we're in for a big surprise. So don't think that it won't happen here. That's the big thing. We have like this false sense of insulation. And so guys, just pay attention. So what I wanted to ask you is um, how can the consumers really pay attention to things? Um, will we start seeing this fall possibly some inflation um, or will they try to suppress that? What, what are certain market markers that we can look out for and, you know, look out for in, in our world? We're seeing it in real estate. Right now in real estate, you're, we're seeing properties go sideways. We're seeing in certain markets they're declining. Unless we're talking about major metropolitans where there's a lot of work uh, in all the other areas, properties are falling. They're, and, and I believe they're going to start falling a little faster than not. We're seeing um, less cash being spent out there as well. We're seeing people being a little more um, depending on slightly less on credit. Um, we don't see it in gasoline. For whatever reason, we, we derive our safety in the economy based on the price of gas. And so when the price of gas remains at about $4 or less, we tend to feel relatively safe. And so, uh, but as far as markers are concerned, we're going to see it in our foods and our consumables. We're going to see it at the grocery store. We're going to see it in um, toiletries, believe it or not. Uh, we're going to see it in, in, um, in those daily consumables that are going to rise in value quite a bit where, where suddenly $100 is spent very readily on, on very small things, on a small amount of, of things, a small number of things, and maybe not even high-quality items either. So the purchasing power of the dollar we will see in our daily consumables at our daily grocery stores. Um, does that answer your question, Don? Absolutely. <clears throat> Thank you so much. And I just also wanted to offer, if everyone starts wavering in their confidence, that's, that's a telltale. Would that be correct? It would. It would. There, there's, a, there's a misnomer there, though, Don. If, if I were to travel to Mexico right now, Mexico takes the dollar. If I travel... Uh, to a variety of countries in Central America, in South America, in, in other countries, they'll take the dollar, they'll happily take the dollar. Um, and so we believe, well, the dollar is obviously strong because these countries are accepting it. What we don't notice is the, the, the larger countries, uh, China, Russia, uh, Iran, uh, uh, the, the African continent, um, well, even though Venezuela is going through their troubles, Brazil as well, all of them, all these countries are not interacting in the dollar, or they're trying not to. They're trying to stem away from the use of the dollar. Uh, as a world reserve currency, the dollar has been used to buy goods, services, as well as oil, especially. And these countries are looking for an alternative. Alternative. They're using either the yuan or gold 
or even the euro right now. Um, and so from, from a macro level, the dollar is being used less. And what's been what, the way we've been able to export inflation is by having all these other countries use the dollar, which they're no longer doing. And, that, and simultaneously, we're printing more of it. So by definition, we will start to feel some inflation because of that. Because our news gives us a very narrow scope, a very funnel um, level of, of, of information um, that is mostly domestic, something that happens in our neighborhood or something that happens immediately around us, we're unaware at, at a macro level of what's occurring. And for that reason, I, I think it brings us to ease um, too much ease, in fact, where it keeps us from acting. So, so yes, uh, things are occurring at a macro level fast. So, in closing, can you wrap this up with a positive tip of the day to keep us up and understanding that all things shall pass, right? You know. <laughs> I'll tell you, Don, I don't want to be Pollyanna about this, but at the same time, I'm also not a, a, a doomsday guy. Um, I, I laugh every day. Uh, we go out and we hike and we jog and we, we cook at home and we have a very good time with my family and I. And I enjoy my, my parents and my children and my friends and my clients and I'm blessed and I'm grateful every single day and I say so every day. Um, so being responsible and acting in one's self-preservation is important. And it doesn't mean we stop living. It doesn't mean we stop smelling the roses. It just means that we act. And oftentimes at our perimeter, our own family members disregard or, or even criticize whatever words of advice we might give them for preparation. And therefore, we find ourselves prepping on their behalf as well. Um, so all I have to say is prepare with joy, prepare with happiness, stay grateful, stay abundant, and uh, roll with the punches as they come. And, and it's important to, uh, to stay present the whole time and to remain grateful. I love it. Great information. Thank you so much. And as we wrap up today's segment, much appreciation to our show sponsor, SilverPreparedness.com. Do subscribe to our channel, click the link in the description below the video, and visit our site today. Join our dynamic team led by AG Leverage, myself, and together, let's soar. And if you're finding value from our conversations, do be sure to also share this information because our channel is to get this timely and pertinent information out to all because we believe they should all know it. But we need your assistance as our loyal listeners to do that because your exposure to your friends and sharing is going to just widen the exposure. So you're very important to this process. Thank you again, AG Leverage, for your time and dedication to getting this message out. And we know it makes a huge difference to so many as they are learning more and more about the monetary system here in the United States and beyond. So until our next segment, have a remarkable day being in the know, and we encourage you to join the 1% that are stackers with us. Bye for now. <laughs>